How's it going guys? I actually just recorded this video and I'm pissed because for some reason my Canon R6 decided not to record uh, and I kept on getting an error that said like cannot play back movie. So I have no idea if my computer is even gonna read it. So I'm gonna just go ahead and film this video again. Uh, but this week I ended up picking up the Manfrotto Be Free Advanced Tripod, uh, travel tripod. And as you can see, it is very small comes in at three pounds and I absolutely love it. Um, I'm gonna put on the screen the actual length of the tripod when, it, when it's compacted away like this, but it's definitely no more than like two feet. It's definitely less than two feet. So uh, that's what this video is gonna be about. Um, the way I'm gonna pretty much structure this video is I'm gonna just kind of talk briefly about why I wanted to get a travel tripod. And then I'm gonna talk about the sort of features and the main things that I noticed with this tripod that I like or don't like. And then at the end, I'm gonna talk about who I think this tripod is for and do I recommend this and should you buy this tripod? So I'll put the chapters down below and I hope you find this review useful. And I'm gonna be playing a lot of B-roll to show you you know, all the stuff I'm talking about as well as do it here with you. So to get started, um, the main reason why I bought this tripod is I've been getting really annoyed lately for some reason with my current tripod, which is the Manfrotto 055 tripod and this tripod is a beast it is massive it is great and i love it i do really love this tripod um but it's just too big um and if you know me i shoot a lot of street photography i shoot a lot a lot of landscape photography and while it is very beneficial to have a big heavy tripod and a big steady tripod for a lot of reasons a lot of the times i feel like it's overkill for me um and a lot of the times it's just very cumbersome and a pain to carry around. Um, if you know, I made a review for the bag that I use, which is the Hex brand cinema backpack. Um, and one of my major complaints with that ba with that bag is there's no good way to kind of like store your tripod, especially when you have like a large, large tripod. However, with this one, this one fits in the water bottle pocket perfectly. And it also fits, it also fits on the bottom of the bag where the tripod straps are and it's not hanging out. With my big tripod, it would literally stick out and I'll show you about like six inches on both sides. Um, and it was not ideal. If I was like on a trail or doing street photography, walking on a busy street, the amount of people I've had to apologize to for hitting, uh, hitting them with my tripod when it's like stuck to my bag is like embarrassing. This one, however, fits perfectly under there and it's lighter, it doesn't feel heavy. Um, and I kind of, when I'm not using it, I kind of forget that it's there. Um, which is kind of what you want out of a travel tripod. So that's why I ended up picking this up. I picked it up from a local camera, camera store, did a ton of research before I bought it. And when I was at the camera store, I was also looking at other tripods. I looked at this one, a couple of Gitsos, um, a Benro, a Siriu or something like that, and the Peak Design one. And this is the one I came away with, but let's move on to talk about the features that I like and don't like about this tripod. So super simple, this is when it's collapsed. Uh, to sort of just get it into tripod mode, you just gotta bend the legs over, you hear the audible clicks, you bring the center column down, and boom, you have a little miniature tripod, and you know, you can bring the ball head up or whatever. And the minimum height when it's like this is, I have it written down, 16 inches, which is a good height. Um, it's a good like small height, you wanna get close to the ground, you can do it. It also has uh, legs that can be pretty much at 90 degrees. And so if you get all these legs at 90, 90 degrees and you bring the center column up, uh, then you can get really, you know, really low shots to the ground, really steady shots because it's gonna be very, it's gonna have like a big base to be on. So that's another good option to have as well. And the overall build quality is really, really good on this guy. Um, it is the, I got the aluminum version because it was cheaper, came in at $200. The carbon fiber one was like an extra, I think like $100, $150. And I think it was worth it. Um, it was really, really light, but I do think uh, the, aluminum, the aluminum is good. It's definitely built very well. Um, it's Manfrotto, so you can always expect like pretty quality stuff from them. And the next thing I want to talk about is at the camera shop I was at, they did have the option to either go with the lever lock or the sort of spinning lock or twist the lock that I ended up going with. And I know this is always a big debate. Um, on my big tripod, I do have the lever locks, however, and I do actually prefer them. However, with this one, I went with the twist locks. And the main reason why is since this is a travel tripod, I wanted it to be as low profile as possible. 
And one thing I've noticed with lever locks that's super annoying is they love to snag onto everything, whether it's like it snags onto your clothing or you're walking on a trail and it snags onto like branches and leaves and stuff like that. It's happened to me uh, on an airplane. It was stored in like the, you know, the cabin container above your head. And when I was taking it out, it was like stuck to some lady's luggage. And it's just super annoying to deal with. But with the travel tripod, I didn't want to have to deal with that. So I ended up going with the twist lock. And honestly, I actually am enjoying these a lot. They're built really well. Uh, they have a good rubber finish. You get a good grip on them and they're super easy to use. Literally just give it a nice half twist and they extend. And you want to lock them back up. Just give it a good, nice twist. And these things are not going anywhere. Um, and super simple, especially on a tripod this size. I, I prefer this. Um, they're, it's low profile. I'm not going to snag. And they work They work really well. And I don't feel like they're going to break or anything like that, which is important. So I'm going to extend this a little bit um, and sort of talk to you guys about the ball head. I do really like the ball head on this tripod. I like pretty much all of Manfrotto's ball heads to be honest. And this one reminds me a lot of the one on my 055 ball head, just a miniature version of it. Um, but you have your two basic knobs that you would, if you're familiar with any, I don't know what the ball head numbers are, I'll put them on the screen, but if you're familiar with any of the other like ball heads from Manfrotto, uh, you have the one that controls your ball head, and then you have a smaller one that controls the actual pan of the ball head. So it's good because they're separate and they're not the same thing. So you kind of have like more, you know, you have two options to play with. And something else you also have in the one that controls the butt head, there is another uh, sort of switch in the middle of it. And when you rotate, rotate this in either way, uh, you can either decrease or increase the sort of tension. So when you loosen the ball head, you can make it really loose or you can make it really tight to really give you like sort of full control over get like nice controlled shots in whatever direction you're trying to shoot in, which is a good option to have. Another thing I really like about this tripod compared to my 055 and other Manfrotto tripods I've used, um, instead of to raise a center column, instead of having the sort of a uh, screw that's on the side of the tripod. That can always be a little annoying because if you're not really looking uh, at your tripod and you wanna extend like or lower your center column, you kind of have to hunt for it with your hand and you're not sure which side it's on because there's other features on the tripod. Uh, but with this one, it's really easy. It's the center column at the bottom. There is a screw or a clamp and you just loosen it or tighten it to raise it and you know it's going to be in the same spot every single time and you're not going to be hunting around for how to raise or lower the center column. Um, this also does feature the Manfrotto hook which I do not prefer but the hook that's sort of between the uh, the leg joints. Uh, something I prefer about other tripods over Manfrotto is I like the hook to be at the center column uh, so that way I can put my bags I put my bags there and it's just easier. I feel like with the where Manfrotto places their hook system, uh, sometimes my bag doesn't always fit there and it doesn't have like the best like hinge. So I, I feel like my bag isn't always secured. And I don't know, I, I think it's not a big deal, but I definitely prefer the hooks that are on the center column, but that is just me. That is a gripe I have. Uh, this does also come with the Manfrotto Easy Link. Um, and this is where you can pretty much, I don't have anything actually with the, with the accessory joints or whatever, the accessory like screws that you use here, but I'll try to find a picture online and put it on the screen. But with this easy link, uh, you can pretty much screw on these, uh, these sort of joints that have different ball joints and you can screw on monitors or audio equipment or other things that you want, pretty much anything you want. It's just a very basic screw mount. And I think it's good that Manfrotto has this. And I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but just to mention it now, at full height, this does reach 59 inches or four feet 11 inches, which is a really good height. And that's pretty much the overview of the tripod and its features. So who do I think this tripod is for? And I'm pretty, there's pretty much a few groups of people. Um, if you're like me and you already have your major, big, uh, stable tripod and you just want something smaller, something to travel with, I think this is a phenomenal option. If you're somebody who doesn't have a tripod and you're looking to get one, but you don't necessarily want to spend the money on a big tripod, this is another good option. While it may not be as steady as let's say a big tripod and maybe you'll get some you know, jitters when you're shooting like long exposures at 30 seconds in windy conditions, um, I still think this is a really good option. I think for $200, it's kind of a steal. You get a lot for the amount that you pay uh, and it's a good build, build quality. And pretty much I think I'm gonna be using most tripods a lot of the time. Um, pretty much if I'm doing anything that I know I'm gonna be doing 30 second exposures, really long exposures, or I'm working in a studio or I'm doing real estate photography, then I will be using my big tripod. 
but pretty much everything else, um, if I just need basic everyday tripod work, I will be taking this with me. I'll leave this in the car, have this in my bag, and I have the best of both worlds. And yeah, I definitely would recommend this tripod. And I know you can actually pick it up used probably around like $150. So uh, that's another good option as well. It does come with other stuff. It comes with a bag. Yeah, overall, I do recommend this, this tripod and I would recommend it to pretty much everybody, professional, amateur, whoever. Um, I, you can definitely get good use out of this. I know it'll, it'll treat you well. So I'm gonna conclude the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I was concise. I hope I uh, gave you good feedback on this tripod. There's really not much to not like about this tripod, only a few things I don't like. So uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. I'll also link that down below. And I will see you all in the next one. I will be reviewing the Canon RF 15 to 35 millimeter uh, very soon. I just got it recently and I've shot it with it like three times. But I want to do a little bit more before I get like a full on review. But uh, I'm going to end the video. Thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. Share this with your friends. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, guys.